Okay, so this is Laura's startup. Right? So this is her stuff coming on the on the display set. Her lighting system, nice and pink, very jolly. Um, and then you'll see preconditioning starting to the left hand. These are what we call petals, these things. And these are essentially uh, touch-enabled um, uh, displays. Mm -hmm. What we have said with this is, uh, on the left hand side you have vehicle controls, on the right hand side you have social stuff. And you can see that we've very deliberately uh, apportioned equal weight to each. What we're saying is that with the increasing intelligence of cars, the driving function is becoming uh, less important. Um, what is more important is to redress a fundamental imbalance, which I see, or, or a, a lagging behind, which I see, which is originally the automobile was about um, uh, social enabling. It was about enabling you to go and see your mates yep. and, and have fun and, and go out and, and live your life. These days we have a fully permanently connected lifestyle where you're always talking to your friends and the blind spot is when you get in your car. Suddenly it's the other way around. And if you look at the development of the car, you know, the car, even though um, it, it's hugely technologically advanced, socially speaking, it's still on the flat line. So what we really want to do is, is bring some kind of different fundamental story to the, the act of driving. To, to, to keep you connected with your friends and, and keep you enabled uh, um, regarding your social life. So if we go, let's say for instance, if I switch to a demo mode here, this is the kind of information that you'd have when you're driving, because obviously you don't want to have too much distraction. Um, in terms of the overall architecture, you will notice that there's a huge amount of space here. Right. So the way that we've done that, we have a Vistion climate system which is entirely under the hood. So it's, it's enabled for an electric car, but you could equally put it into a petrol vehicle. And it means that we've taken out the heater box here and all the ducting, put it under the hood, so we have a huge amount of space here. The airbags we have in the roof here. Um, we know this is feasible, so there's no problem. All of this is doable. And in terms of legislation, is that legal? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know uh, globally, but uh, as far as I understand, I think these are okay. These are okay. Uh, obviously, the other thing is, it means if you put the airbag up there, you have a lot more form opportunities with the steering wheel. You don't have to have that big, big bulge in the centre. So, now that we've got this room here, what we've done is we've fixed the passenger seat in position here and we've shared the space between the front here and the back. So you see you have a lot of leg room in the back seat there. As I said before, this, this blue part here, the, the, the perimeter, what we call the bathtub, is a global component. And then these objects will be the regional differentiation. And then for personal differentiation, we have these, what we call physical apps. It's a kind of a playful piece of design. You see the scale is quite large, but it's deliberate. It's, it's kind of taking the idea of the, the iPhone app or the Android app and making it big, making it a human scale. Mm -hmm. So the idea would be, ultimately, you would either buy these from the dealership or you would buy just these hooks and you would get these things made on a 3D printer to whatever specification you want. Uh, you would perhaps switch them over when you want to refresh the car, but as I said outside, I don't see people chopping and changing a lot because people just aren't really that interested in, in refreshing constantly, but they do want to make sure that they have something which fits their lifestyle. So you see we have this blade along here. Why have a console that's fixed that, that, with one function uh, when you can have a blade and put whatever functions you like along here? So we have modules here, we have potential for modules here and along the front here. Now I'll tell you a little bit about the lighting. Uh, so you can see we have displays here, these are very high resolution. What we decided to do was have a sort of a reaction to that and have an extremely low resolution display here, just illuminated cells. Um, again, it's a little bit along the lines of playing with the scale to bring a more human feeling to the interior. So you don't feel locked out by cold technology, you feel somehow a little bit more engrossed with the big toyish kind of scale that, that's, uh, that's going on there. Um, and what information is being displayed on there? Is that the battery that's, level? That's, that, yeah, that's battery charging. Uh, you would also have, for instance, uh, turn indicators. Uh, 
you would have um, door ajar. So you see, it's a kind of a door. And then this is a ride share request. So question mark. So there's a question coming in. That, unfortunately, it's just part in place. But what would normally happen is the script would come up on the main display okay. saying ride share request, and then it would set the navigation to if you if you accept navigation sets to that person being the destination. I mean, the, the interesting thing to me is this, this idea that it's very much now a very layered. It has a kind of structure and a hierarchy. You know, you have the kind of less important information at the back in a kind of lower resolution as you, as you come closer. You kind of comes more into details. focus. Yeah, exactly. Comes into focus, gets sharper. Yeah. <laughs> um, for, for us, the, the start point of this car in terms of the physical uh, creation is that infinitely thin layer which is the point of contact between person and vehicle so we, we start with that that thin layer and then we work back into the vehicle so we started with what should the in interface be then okay what's the software that supports that then what's the hardware that supports that and it's almost as though we put the pictures into the air. We floated the picture in the air here, in the air there, and you can see that in terms of design resolution, it's very much showing that we're simply supporting an image. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a fully enclosed object. It's, it's supporting a single image, a single interface. Um, the form resolution of this, the idea is that uh, it's for ergonomics, so that you can put your hand up here and use your thumb, put your fingers down here and use your index finger, or grab it from the side. Whichever way you do it, it should feel like that's the natural mm -hmm. way to do it. Um, it, it. There was a lot of debate about that, because when we started with the, with the foam model and the card, people said, oh, I'd do it like this. No, I'd do it like this. So we said, okay, let's try and do it every way, and, and then hopefully we'll be, we'll be successful. It kind of reminds me a little bit um, of the Citroen from the like 70s, early 80s with the kind of satellites and taking back this kind of real estate which is has kind of been lost actually. Yeah, absolutely. There is definitely something to be said for, um, especially these days, now um, we're trying to bring more of a driver-focused environment. Um, there's definitely something to be said for bringing that fingertip control back. Um, I think potentially the issue that, that has been had previously is uh, because it's very different from other cars, if, if say one OEM brings a multi-function object, somebody who comes from another car comes into that car and says, that's strange and unusual, I'm a little bit scared, I don't really like it, I want it more conventional. The advantage with this is we have that multi-function fingertip reach, but because you bring your profile from the cloud, your lighting scheme, your, your level of desired complexity, you immediately feel much more comfortable.